I am saying if Rocky Bay was real, if he was there outside in the world, somewhere, I am sure he will have his vulnerable, you know, uh, side. When you actually write stories from your own life or or your experiences, there is a certain depth to, to the, those stories. Those are very rare ones, you cannot let them go when they come to you. You don't work with the superstar directors even when they want to work with you. Is really? that is that no. true? Nani, it's such a pleasure to finally sit with you. I've been an admirer since Iga. My pleasure, ma'am. I'm so excited that <laughs> you're you. here in Mumbai promoting Dasra. Yeah. Uh, now, when I saw the trailer for the film, instantly reminded me of two movies, very successful films, Pushpa and KGF. Yeah. Now, are the comparisons flattering or is it scary? Um, it's scary that, I, that everyone kept asking me this question. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in a way good only, but I know for sure it is something very away from those two films. And I know the film will anyway, uh, uh, film has enough to once it releases, it's, it's very different from those two, but it will make a mark and I'm sure everyone will love it. And if if the comparison with those two films is going to get more people to the theatre, then I'm more than happy. Right. Yeah. Well, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, what's the problem? Exactly. Yeah. So you describe this film as a perfect combination of mass and content. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, uh, it was, uh, it is generally what happens when it's mass films, the focus on, uh, it's, it's not that relatable. It doesn't look real. Generally, the mounting of the scenes, the setup, the emotions between the characters all feel a little larger than life, little placed for that action to happen. It, it doesn't feel, you might not feel that, ha, this could happen at, with me, this could happen in our street, this could happen with my family. You might not have that feeling when you're watching the other scenes also. Those also feel mounted to, you know, go in a certain direction to have those mass episodes or whatever you call it. I think that relatability is there in Dasra. You will see the emotion, you will you'll see the situations and everything very relatable, very subtle, very real. But if within that real space comes a moment which needs a larger than life moment. And then that leads to a mass which, which is absolute aggression and the, it's, not, it's not just slow motion shots and it's not just about the making it uh, powerful because of the taking of it. It is also because of the emotion behind it. So, so when you when you forget that it's a film, when you be, start believing it, and you get involved, and then you also enjoy a mass moment on screen. That's a rare combination, I feel. So that I think is there with us. Sir. Well, you've of course worked with Rajamouli, who's the king of yeah mass plus content, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, he's he's yeah, done it yeah, all his yeah, life yeah. Uh, and and done it so well. But the thing is, Nani, in this film, uh, just look at your own image behind you and you're almost unrecognizable. Mm, yeah. Shahid, you, you look and you look again and you're like, oh, this is Nani, right? But you, you talked in an interview about how the real stress was post back up mm. because it would take sort of some five levels of cleaning up to get yeah. all the makeup yeah, yeah. off. Tell me what it took to become this man uh, internally, externally and do you miss him now that you're done with him? I don't miss him at all. I'm <laughs> so happy I'm done with him because it's just really tiring and taxing mentally, physically. Uh, Why because, mentally? Uh, mentally because it's a very intense film, extremely intense film. You will enjoy the, what's happening on screen but uh, for me to just be in that character, that body language and to feel what Dharani uh, is is very uh, taxing because uh, this guy is all most of the time drunk and that there's also reason in that particular place we Pali, everybody drinks not uh, not for pleasure but it's, it's a way of life and and even the people who work in the coal mines they drink and go work because uh, it's too hard it's too hard yeah. they, they need that certain numbness to actually go and work. so whoever controls the the bar in that village becomes the power uh, holder. So, so there's this drama around it. So there's a lot of um, angles to it, and there's a lot of uh, uh, emotion going on constantly. So there is no moment where I can just chill, relax on the set and crack few jokes. If I have to be on that arc continuously, so when you're constantly thinking where, which part of the film this is coming and is the mood right or not, so it is mentally taxing. At the same time, physically it is unbelievably uh, tiring because 
we put this set of this village in uh, 22 acres of land in outskirts of Hyderabad, and we filled it with that black dust because it's a village from Kolkata. So the moment we get down the caravan, um, it's like it's the dust is all over us, and um, through the day when you're inhaling that dust. So the nights we couldn't sleep properly. Every one hour I used to get up, and then I used to feel that little congestion in the chest and all that. So it was like I was literally. This is the first film. Every time, generally, when I'm getting done with a shoot, I'll be like, I'll I'll feel that I'm I'll miss those costumes. I'll miss those that get up being that character. This film, I was counting days. I was like, when will this get done? So yeah, it was very. You're extreme. done with Dharni. <laughs> I'm done with Dharni, and I just. But I'm very proud of Dharni. Right. What we have done and how it shaped. So very very excited for March 30th. But I just don't want to get back into that get up or do anything related to that. Yeah. But you know, Dharni, as I was watching the promo, I was thinking that the characters that you've done have been very, uh, largely speaking, sort of vulnerable. Right. Mm. They don't. They don't sort of go into that area of very hyper masculine. Heroes, uh, I remember Jersey weeping with your character because you know, and people calling him a loser, and all of that that happens in that first half. And 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 you were okay to do that, which a lot of leading men perhaps wouldn't have been, okay, okay. right? But Dharni feels like he is larger than life. He is very violent. So, mm. do mass heroes necessarily have to be hyper masculine? He is actually very vulnerable guy. He is. Dharni is extremely vulnerable. I I really I feel everybody is vulnerable. Even the so-called whoever is my whatever that hyper masculine guys are also vulnerable. It's just that we don't show that side of them. We just, on, on screen. We just have to guess it. Yeah, yeah, we just have to guess it. And we don't in films. We just we don't we just don't explore that part of them. We just, we want to believe that he's all the time twenty four. You think Rocky like, Bai is also vulnerable? I'm hundred percent sure, but we we won't have ever explored. I I'm saying if Rock. He was was real. If he was there outside in the world, somewhere, I'm sure he'll have his vulnerable, you know, uh, side, hundred percent. So I believe in that, and uh, I don't think it's possible to, for someone to be not be vulnerable at all at any point of time. So even Dharni is vulnerable. You actually, you'll actually see that he could be the most vulnerable guy I, I have ever played in my career. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will be looking for a tear review on March fifth. <laughs> let's see. I don't know. This is my feeling, but let's see. Yes. So, Dani, who was the inspiration as an actor for you? Now, this role is seen as you getting out of your comfort zone. So, who was the inspiration for you to do this? I've always constantly tried to get out of my comfort zone, but this is like an extreme, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, opposite of. But uh, in my uh, uh, inspiration will is the director of this film. She can't do it. I kept looking at his body language. It's his language. It's his, it's his slang which we spoke in the film. He comes from Godark and he speaks to me like Dharni. And uh, his father worked in uh, coal mines as dumper driver for forty years. So the characters, the language, every small detail comes from his own life. So he literally is the guy who I need to follow. So whenever he used to speak, whenever he used to do something, I, I just used to notice him. And even when some the dialogue writer used to come and tell me something, I used to wait till this guy says it from his mouth, so I can get it. Because I can only follow one character. I can't, I can't in one shot be like Sri Kant and one shot be like writer. So unless he comes and gives me the line, unless I find put something into the character of his thing, I. So that's that's one direction for me to understand Dharani better. So that's what I follow. You've said that uh, Shrikanth is the next big thing, and mm. and they say about you that uh, you don't work with the superstar directors, even when they want to work with you. Not is really. that is that no, true? Not really. Not when they want to work with me. No, but problem is, I ask for a script, uh, and they don't want to give it. No, not if they they all know that. Even, so even when they want to, they might be thinking, what if we go and then what if he says not this script. So they will have their fears. I'm sure. I'm not a guy who will say, "Ha, huh, combination, acha hai. Let's jump in." No, <laughs> it's not that. Ha, huh, him and me, and let's do a film. I don't understand that logic. Um, you have to see the story. Yeah, we don't. We need to know what is what we are going to do, and if we are all happy and excited about it, let's go and do. No, no. A lot of producers come to me and say, "Sir, this year we are. You have to do a film for us." 
how like which film what film they are like from july you have to give us from july what are we doing so if we without knowing i can't really that's my biggest problem But like i can't only say ha i like your work before so let's do a film no what if i don't like what you yeah if when i particularly when i like your work i want you and me our combination to be the best work so i can't like blindly jump into the project so so that happens very rarely i did work with you know few you know, big that including rajmouli sir and all work with rajmouli sir nare i was i was almost like no one i was like just four five films old rajmouli sir was al- already a huge director Rajma- magdira had been made ah, yeah yeah magdira was made and i was just this upcoming actor he called me home ramagaru nicely treated me with some food and all that he sat and he narrated me the whole thing i don't see that thing happening with everyone so i like to go in my own way where everything everybody respects everybody where it's all comfortable and for me it doesn't matter if it's an experienced director or a new director talent is talent whether it's new or old so i feel something exciting comes my way i just jump in so how do you know when you say shrikant odella is the next big thing what do you look for in a first time director i look for a certain honesty you know does he have his own voice or does, is he trying to mock you know imitate someone uh, so if if he's if his genre is something which is better to be you know if he's imitating it's okay that's okay if he's let's say he somebody came with a great idea which is very mainstream which is like a proven formula kind of a film if he is imitating that's fine but if he is coming with coming up with an idea which is original then he needs to have a very original voice to put that out there so i look i look for a certain honesty which i cannot really tell you what exactly is the format of or you know you form- feel it you, you feel it it's just gut feeling yeah. you you know that this guy is not trying to sell this film to me he is not trying to start a project with me you know this guy is really invested into this one and whatever he is saying uh, is you know his approach is honest towards what he wants to make with me so that is what i follow not every time it works but when it works it works great <laughs> yeah how did you train for the specific telangana dialect um thanks to shrikant again shrikant's entire team uh, are his friend from that same area so he has a 10 people team all of them are hardcore rural telangana and if if i have to you know cross this 10 layers of filtering then i i'm sure i'll get perfect telangana I, i didn't even have a doubt that if i was sounding right or not because even a small um, um, what is it small pronunciation is wrong on location they'll stop you. they'll all they'll all be like no even six of them say ah uh, okay but the four of them will be there who will say no 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 it's not completely right so i was like if if i passed all of them then there's nobody who's going to stop me <laughs> yeah <laughs> the ultimate test Ult- ultimate test yeah yeah <laughs> no speaking of sort of honesty you started as a assistant director with bapu right. and i still remember watching <laughs> as a little girl hampanch How much? Oh, yeah. oh my yeah, god oh my, and just yeah. being struck and i didn't obviously know anything about cinema but i've never forgotten scenes in that film and mithun chakravarty's performance in that film what did you learn from bapu bapu gar i i'm extremely proud that my career started with him because my first film was radha gopalam which bapu garu was someone who always believed more in uh, in emotion than technique or like i really feel that's what we are missing now nowadays babu gar used to say i was an assistant director right when i used to go do some kind conti- a couple of times when i tried to put something i uh, stopped everyone just before the take and i said sir sir that flower was was not there in the last take babu gar used to say there sneha and shrika and the performing if somebody is looking at the flower was that means our picture is already flopped <laughs> now no point in you setting it up also right if somebody noticed it okay so he used to so be so continue there's nah, no point. no he will be like he's fine but right. his focus is never on that so it is not about he really believed he he used to say like he believed 80% of the time audience are looking at your lead actors 80% of the time they are in the theater which color of the set how well the set is built or some other details of the background or the foreground your story is being conveyed to the audience through them 
So if we really don't get that right, uh, then things will never be right. Like it might look like ah nice well made film that this and all that, but the heart won't be in the in the right place. So yeah, there are a lot of things I've learned from him, including the discipline part. and he's extremely simple he always has this one bag and he used to come to the location and you you have to find him in the crowd so he he used to get me so lot of i think for my for me the introduction about cinema making everything was babu garu and i'm like extremely proud so wherever i go i say i'm from babu school yeah, <laughs> yeah. how wonderful yeah. how wonderful <coughs> you know i watched this interview you did with sadguru hmm. and mm-hmm. you said this very lovely story about how when you were this ad you got 8000 rupees was it 4000 uh, 4000 rupees initially the 2500 check and the check got bounced so i can't consider that my remuneration so the first remuneration i got was 4000 rupees 4000 and, and all were 100 rupees not so it is like this <laughs> thick yeah so you said that when you drove home that day you had a little bump in your pocket of those 4000 rupees mm-hmm. rolled up and and You said there was such a happiness yeah. of that moment, yeah. uh, and now you're making yeah. much, much, much more money than that. Uh, but you've never experienced that that high, that never, high. Yeah. And you asked him, "Is success overrated?" And I want to pose that same question to you because you, Nani, are a success in an industry that is run by a few very powerful families. Mm. Uh, you are one of the very few outsiders. who grew up behind a cinema hall and was just in love with the movies and mm. is now sitting here and and you know as a great big star is success overrated what have you discovered absolutely overrated ma'am really uh, undoubtedly overrated i'll tell you like uh, when uh, when i felt very happy with my own film and it didn't do well um uh, and, and on the day of that release where it didn't open well or it didn't which which film let's say for example one okay, film any i don't film. Want, okay, okay. Huh. and a film which i felt on my own film it is average it's okay okay film but it's doing extremely well i was happier on the day where it was not doing well but i know that it's a good film so success is definitely overrated so i no i'm sure who will be very happy with this and someone who will be very happy with this also where the film is doing well is the ultimate thing for me but i it is overrated because you can believe in this but you can't believe in this this is you this is not you this is not in your hands right so when it's something not in your hands if it is a fluke or if it is not every time you really do great things you not get you, you don't try, get success yeah it it's, it's, it's a mix of different success is a combination of 100 things hard work is not hard work is hard work so i feel definitely when you doing everything for success success never comes is what i feel when you're doing and genuinely trying to do something which you really believe in i think that will also follow so giving that much of you know weight to success is definitely i feel is not the right thing and it is 100% overrated i feel but not everyone might agree with me but yeah for me it is definitely overrated and and i know how i have seen success when i was an ad and how no i know how i thought oh this must this is how success must be from a place where i didn't make it yet and i know how i look at it from the place i made it so what i thought is definitely a uh, not true so definitely it's overrated so anyone who is thinking uh, uh, of success rather than thinking of what makes me enjoy like what makes me what do i want to do in life uh, not thinking that and thinking that how do i get success is i think in the wrong direction yeah yeah Yeah, because you've also said that people shouldn't always be working for money. Mm. Because if that happens, then the art dies out. Yeah. How do you m- keep this balance between art and business? Because cinema is both. I really genuinely feel now. I have, I, uh, I never imagined for myself to be here, and I really did things which I want to. I like, and there were a few times which I, which I was not very sure, but I didn't have an option. Also, and. Uh, I so I I really I don't what if when you really do uh, cinema is not I didn't cinema art can be business obviously where we are doing it for someone to see and enjoy and obviously the business is involved and someone is putting in money it is but uh, I do I, as an artist I'm not a, I'm not the producer I'm not talking as a producer but as an artist I would not want to 
look at it as a the business because artist cannot think that way you, but you're also a producer nani yeah, then i all i am the artist who is producing i am i am not i am producing films to you know you know introduce new content or uh, some unique films and i in fact my entire team in my production house believes that i'm a i'm a very terrible producer like because uh, every you, film, you waste too much money yeah like yeah and i don't i don't even understand how much to spend to what business what's the market on this project how much can i send all films worked for me but uh, i would have uh, if each film's budget has doubled because of me because of me saying yes to everything so they all say now because it's working it's all fine but when it doesn't work then it's going to be a big problem because you're not doing it right so yeah i'm not the like the how a producer should be so i'm a bad example of a producer uh, when it comes to the business terms but as an actor i feel i can't look at every film as um, uh, just a m- money making thing because end of the day i wanted to make money for my producers for my distributors for my exhibitors and i will also make sure that there is that element but i that's not the only thing i feel yeah and end of the day i think i really want whoever is coming to the theater if can they can feel something if they will have this special connection with the film few few years later if i can look back and i say oh they're good films uh, then i think that's all i that's what you want mm. you know i saw a video of you promoting dasra at a holy event mm. uh, and you said there that ab north south koi nahi hai it's mm. one indian film industry now is that very exciting for you as an actor because you know a couple of years ago i had done an interview with alu arjun and he had said to me that oh bollywood is aspirational and of course it is the dream and i don't think that's true anymore um, you don't need to do a bollywood film to talk to north india is that exciting for you as an actor extremely exciting definitely because now everything is um, we've been uh, uh, now we always watched uh, uh, hindi films Uh, down south i i watched a lot of blockbusters in the theater as a kid uh it was not like that for here no they wouldn't have watched any telugu films in the theater you know you know most of the north area now it is getting equal you know now it's the equation is being balanced now so now everyone's equal so the competition will be about who will make the next best film so i think that's a very good thing for the audience of our country because um a lot more good content will keep coming up now no because they know you you're not just playing one gimmick to impress your you know people around you you know everyone is going to watch might as well make a great film wait you know you know work harder and make a great film and rishab shetty had told me that the more local you go the mm. more universal it becomes mm-hmm. so would you say that dasra is an example of that because it feels very rooted yes i agree even even the director of parasite also said that on the oscar stage the most creative is most personal or something like that uh, most personal is the, mo- the most creative i completely agree with that because there are uh, uh, it's just not uh, uh, when you when you write a script in between four walls when you have this discussion with writers and think of stories you make a certain kind of films when you actually write stories from your own life or or your experiences there's a certain depth to to the those stories and those stories cannot be those are very rare ones you cannot let them go when they come to you and, uh, and because of we, we need to and those stories there are a lot of stories which exist like that in our in in this rural places of our country in different different state if you can really get them and if can somebody who comes from there is ready to willing to narrate that story to us in a cinematic in a nice way where we enjoy the film also not it's not like a documentary right where it should have all those high points emotions and everything and we also get to know oh this is how they speak this is how they live and this is their culture tradition everything i think it is extremely exciting so yeah dasra falls into exactly that bracket and i'm so glad that we actually pulled off a great film this guy definitely this is debut guy but he definitely exceeded my expectation how exciting i can't wait to see it all best for the film thank you thank you